Hello everyone. Today it's TPA Talks. I'm Lala and Tanisha Hill with Unified Community Investors. Mm -hmm. Hello. So today we'll be talking with Miss Tanisha. Did I say that? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to be talking with a couple things. So I'll start off. What do you do? <laughs> well, um, a number of things. I am a real estate broker. I also do property management, but my heart right now is the community service work that I do, and that's my nonprofit, Unified Community Investors. And the mission of UCI is to counter profit-led gentrification by working in collaboration with community stakeholders and residents to increase home ownership and to also unify community investments. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what does that all mean together? So profit-led gentrification is basically when a neighborhood is given a facelift at the expense of the current residents. So what ends up happening is investors come into the neighborhood, they buy land, they build houses. Most of the time, they don't make the houses available for purchase. They make them available for rent. And the rental amounts exceed the regular income of the individuals that are currently staying there. So you may have an area where the median income is like $30,000, but the rental rates is fourteen fifty, dollars like $1,450 a month. Mm -hmm. Well, when you apply for renting, they tell you your income should be three times the rent. If your rent is fourteen fifty, that means your income to be eligible to even rent that property would be fifty thousand dollars a year versus the thirty that's the norm in the area. So you end up not making the homes available for the ones that are living there with the intentions of attracting other individuals whose incomes are higher. Now, um, the issue that we're having in Jacksonville right now is the post COVID. Um, issue that is facing a lot of the nation. Um, COVID made it mandatory for you to work from home. Mm -hmm. And once people got a taste of working from home, they did not really want to go back to work. So there are a lot of work from home opportunities. With that being the case, Jacksonville has a large transient population with higher income. So we are seeing individuals whose income has historically been higher than Floridians flocking to Jacksonville, yet still being able to maintain their incomes from New York, California, and other states whose incomes are higher. So even when it comes down to an application process, you and I could submit the same application, but because your income is coming from someone, somewhere else, it's more likely to be much higher than mine. And so I become excluded from the application process simply on black and white. Like when, on, on the application, you look like a better applicant than I do just because of where your income is coming from. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about... Um, Wait, how do you pronounce your, like, company? Sorry. Unified okay. Community Investors. Let me see that one more time. Can you tell us about your... Sorry. Can you tell us about Unified Community Investors? Yes. Okay. Um, Unified Community Investors originally started with the intentions of just creating quality, affordable housing and referring out... Um, the auxiliary services like financial literacy, credit counseling, and mental health services. Uh, we truly believe you cannot transform a community without transforming the head of the household um, and doing it intentionally. Um, once we understand how money works mm -hmm. and we understand the purpose of credit and how to use it, and then we deal with any of our adverse childhood experiences or adult traumas, then we are in a state to where we can change the trajectory of Black America, period, because we've dealt with the things that have histor historically held us back. Mm -hmm. um, so financial literacy, credit counseling, mental health services were the pillars of unified community investors. Once we started making connections in the neighborhood um, with other stakeholders and nonprofit organizations and leaders, um, we found out that 
there is a great need of these services and even the ones that do exist um, need need a little bit more interaction with the service population that they service so that they can tailor their programs more specifically to the population in that particular geographical location in Jacksonville. Um, we partner with some amazing people. All of last year, Unified Community Investors participated in the Youth Action Series where youth came together once a month um, the first Saturday of every month to do either a community cleanup or a beautification project. So it was to enhance the aesthetics of the neighborhood. We've done things like paint houses. We painted multiple houses, the exterior. We've done lawn service. We have, um, we've assisted with some exterior restoration in addition to doing canvassing, community-based surveys, as well as a partnership with UF and EWU with their indoor air quality survey, um, getting individuals to answer those, and then also have an indoor air quality um, evaluator placed in their home for 90 days to kind of track the quality of the air and then give them feedback on what they can do to improve the health of their air and also have data where UF can then use it for more research and possibly legislation changes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your community involvement with Dark Eva? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> as a real estate agent and um, post COVID, mm -hmm. I sold a property for an investor over market value to a first time home buyer. Both the buyer and the seller, seller were excited about the results. However, in the process of um, getting the house ready, I became uh, friendly with the neighbor next door, an uh, older woman. Well, a month after the property sold, she gave me a call and let me know that her landlord had gave her 30 days to evacuate the property because he now wanted to put his house on the market. She had been living there for five years and was in a month-to-month -month lease, mm -hmm. meaning they really only had to give her 14 days to evacuate but she ended up getting 30 and she was in a situation where her income was fixed she did not have enough money to do what the going market trend at the time was which is first month last month and um security deposit and she ended up living in her truck for a number of months with her two support dogs and it broke my heart so i prayed and prayed and prayed you know, asking God, how can he use me so that we can stop this? I did not want to be the pebble that creates a ripple effect that adversely impact the elder population. She was also a senior citizen receiving disability. Um, and so I ended up being blessed with an opportunity to purchase our first home under the nonprofit. The renovation dollars became available. Um as well as financing to acquire the home. In the process of purchasing the home, I realized that the house literally is walking distance from the house I grew up in on Francis Street. Yeah. So Durkeville has a connection to me because it's literally where I used to play. I used to go to the Emmett Reed Center and I did the summer camps and karate and a number of other projects out of the Emmett Reed Center. In addition, um, while we were renovating the home, Elderly Harris was walking the street um, with his, um, it's like a community outreach team. And I'm being nosy, looking out the window, I'm like, who are those people? They look very suspicious just walking down the street like that. <laughs> So I went outside, and that's when our relationship started. I introduced myself, um, um, Elder Harris and I and his team. We had an opportunity to speak and pray together. And after that, it's history. Like I learned more and more about the impact that he and the members and um, partners that he was in interaction with during the mid-'90s. Um, let me say this again. Um, 
Once we began talking, I was then informed of the work that came out of my all of Primitive Baptist Church from all of the collaborations that had been done um, in that institution, and it blew me away. The New Durkeville exists because of collaborations that took place under Elderly Harris leadership, but not isolation. Like he was not the lead, he was not the only person working to impact change. He was a convener of that change. And that story needed to be heard. So once I heard it and I started um moving with the youth, the youth told us that they wanted to do a mural. And the more we started talking, the more I realized that youth are not aware of living legends, like individuals that are making drastic changes right now, today. And I knew a number of them. So I'm like, let's get you connected with people who transform the face of Durkeville, people who have transformed the face of affordable housing in Northwest Jacks. Um People where you can literally walk down the street and see the transformations they've made and even bump into them in the store and speak to them. Mm -hmm. So that's how we ended up wanting to highlight the work that came out of the Community Alliance Development Corporation, which is the collaborative that came out of Mount Olive Primitive Baptist Church, as well as the affordable housing movement that has been coming out of Northwest Jacksonville CDC for like 20 years mm -hmm. also. So... We wanted to highlight those. And then Ben Frazier recently passed away, but he was also a huge advocate for North Side of Jacksonville. And we wanted to highlight his social service because his voice truly changed things like the monuments, the Confederate monuments came down because of his leadership with the North Side Coalition of Jacksonville. So every one of these individuals have played a huge role in bringing down um, hurdles, um, changing the narrative of what our community should look like and the people that live there, as well as redefining what quality affordable housing looks like. Um, even affordable housing does not need to look like the projects, which is what the old Durkeville looked like. We have plenty examples of that. Flag Street Apartments, which is now called Cascade, Eureka Gardens, Roosevelt. Um, all of these have been substandard housing for since their development. And they are pretty much designed the same way. One way in, one way out. Concrete floors, concrete walls. Very um, high density, like a lot of people cramped into a small amount of space. Mm -hmm. um, and... What the CADC did, which is the Community Alliance Development Corporation that came out of Mount Olive, when they revamped Durkeville, they transformed what affordable housing looks like. They created a template that had never been done before. And if you go to the Oaks of Durkeville now, you would not know that's affordable housing. It It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And when our legislatures, legislators... And our decision makers go to the drawing board to come up with what affordable housing looks like. They have a template that was designed by a community member in connection with the residents of that community. And they put a plan together. They executed that plan. So as we're moving forward, forward affordable housing should not look like the projects anymore because there is a whole new template that's available. Mm -hmm. What are some challenges that you faced during this journey, and how did you overcome them? I could say the biggest challenge is financial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, having the investments or the capital needed to make the changes in the community that you want, and how did we face them? We collaborated. We literally reached out to partners, we reached out to our youth, we reached out to community members, and one of our biggest moments is like, we literally painted a whole house in four hours wow, on amazing. a Saturday. So we met, um, I want to say the first house we did was April 1st. Mm -hmm. um, of last year and with the number of volunteers that came out 
we were able to get the house painted. We had donations from Britain Paint. So I want to yeah. shout out Britain Paint. Mm -hmm. They donated the paint that we used for that restoration. Um, and it really, like, we fundraised through the a GoFundMe page. Um, and we just... We, we saw a need and we met a need. So, like, when we did the yard work, <laughs> when we did the yard work, um, we actually brought lawnmowers from our home, mm -hmm. um, shears from home. We bought shovels from our personal homes, rakes, um, ladders. We were literally all in our garage. So anything you guys could find around the house. Exactly. To, mm -hmm. to get the mission done. We came together as a collaborative. Like the Youth Action Series is something that we want all of Jacksonville to embrace. It doesn't belong to Unified Community Investors or our partner, Center for Children's Rights. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Abdul Hyde Thomas, over at the Center for Children's Rights and his whole youth squad, um, the State of the Young People who have been committed to the Youth Action Series since its inception last year in January, we would not have been able to accomplish as much as we have without that, that amazing partnership. Um, but yeah, when we once we set our mind on what it was we were trying to accomplish, the team got together, discussed what was needed, and day of, we were ready to go. All right. And we did it all last year, from January to December. Everything mm -hmm. we set out to do, we did. That's amazing. What do you love about Dirt the Road the most? The transformation and the people mm -hmm. that made it happen. Um, I love the residents. I love the culture. I love the simplicity of life. Um, sometimes we could really get caught up in thinking that acquisition is what life is about, like getting, 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 acquire, 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 work, 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 perform, perform, perform. But when you see the people come together like they do in Durkinville, you realize that life is about relationships, um, respecting people, um, coming together in unity being there for one another. Being there for one another. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we sacrifice relationships to acquire. And I don't think when we get to the end of this life, we will say, I wish I had bought more stuff. I really think it's going to be, I wish I had spent more time with this person. Exactly. Or I wish I had learned more about what, this member of my family was interested in mm -hmm. or I wish I was there for that moment in their life and Durkeville embodies that and it's a lot of small businesses so like the chicken wing lady on my Myrtle Ave love her okay mm -hmm. so like as a little girl <laughs> we would walk to the chicken wing place and with five dollars you was bowling you understand mm -hmm. you can eat chicken and share chicken with um cousins and friends and then you had the curly fries that so ma'am ketchup and hot sauce oh my please and mm -hmm. thank you but <laughs> that was like the highlight just what y'all gonna do we're gonna go to the chicken wing spot and, and I mean, like, you would get, I think it was back in the day when I was a little girl, it was like three chicken wings and an order of curly fries for $1.25. Right. Ma'am, life was sweet. And then don't mess around and go to the Honey Dripper Lady house. Oh, my God. Don't even give me <laughs> But oh these gosh. are things that you won't find in urban America. You find this in Durkeville. You find this in the urban core. You find this in Black America, which is beautiful. Like, nothing makes me more happy than a honey drip on a hot summer day. Yes. Yeah, Black cherry. That's my favorite. Blue raspberry, mango. Yes. Delicious. My son really likes the pineapple. Oh my god, pineapple is my favorite. <laughs> So good. And my mom did the pineapple with the pineapple crushed fruit on the inside. Yes. A core memory. Yes. And there is a woman that lives off my grief. And she's still there selling her hermony drippers. Mm -hmm. And I've been going to her since I was six years old. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. So it's that it's that part of history that I just love about 
the urban core and mm-hmm. specifically um that niche of 32209 like everything was in walking distance like we walked a whole lot more back then too um sometimes out of necessity other times out of boredom <laughs> um, but um when i speak to the simplicity of life there wasn't so many things keeping us in a house like video games and the computer and the internet like when i was your age i didn't have the internet or a computer in my home um and so we came up with creative things to do outside of the house like playing games and doing different things with your friends and your family basically yes so we had a lot of cookouts a lot of family Mm -hmm. gatherings crab boils things that are normal that you will probably get cited for (laughs) in an HOA community like having a crab boil in your front yard probably wouldn't be permitted (laughs) But, but it was a normal occurrence in our community birthday parties was often celebrated um with the whole community not just family and friends so those are the things that I love Those are the things I'm trying to capture and preserve. Um, Those are the things that we are often kind of steered to be ashamed of or feel like there's something wrong with it. But it really is what keeps us genuine and authentic and connected and full. What is your mission? Like your full entire mission for this? When it comes down to the mural, it's to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Tell the story from the voices that was there. I want the individuals that transformed Durkeville and Northwest Jacksonville to have a chance to be heard while they're here. So many times our workers are busy working so they don't have the time to type out or record or narrate their own stories and it's not until they pass away where someone says oh wow you did all this amazing stuff let's tell your story but they're no longer here to ask those questions too and so now you're researching and hearsay and I believe the best hearsay is from the mouth of the individual that was a part of the project so I really wanted to capture living legends living legends so that you can see that black excellence isn't in a graveyard. It's literally among us. These are gold mines that you can tap into right now. These are people that you can be in the presence of right now. These are people you can research and study and be around right now. And you could honestly say, I am on the shoulders of giants, but actually know what those shoulders look like and what the head of the person is that those shoulders are attached to. Um, I just really want their story told. And I want it told honestly in a timely manner when they can actually receive their roses while they're here. Mm -hmm. Before they leave, so no one can be sad that they didn't have the opportunity and chance. They're going to have their roses before they leave, you're right? And, and also so that the workers don't get to the end of their life and feel like it was all for naught. Like, mm-hmm. there's sometimes, you, Tamisha is a huge, okay, I am a culprit of what I'm about to say. Okay. Sometimes you go through life and you accomplish so much, but you don't realize it. Everybody around you can see what you're doing, but you tend to go from one mission to the next mission to the next mission to the next mission without any celebration. I completely understand. Or any um, recognition of the effort and the role you played in something great happening because... You've envisioned it for so long, it already existed. So when it arrives, it's like, on to the next. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is just a speed bump, or this was necessary. So it's not, you don't permit yourself to have time to celebrate that you put something necessary in place on your journey to excellence. Mm -hmm. And a lot of workers do that. A lot of people that operate for the benefit of others sidestep celebrating themselves 
And if we don't take the time to recognize the greatness in others, then a lot of greatness will continue to keep happening and no one celebrates it. Or recognizes it. Right. And we need to break that cycle. Um, once we break that cycle, I truly believe we will be able to transform the way Black America works together mm -hmm. because it's not a competition anymore. It becomes a chance where I'm looking at you and I'm looking for reason to celebrate you. I'm watching you and I just noticed that you deserve to be celebrated. I'm not going to give you a chance to say no. Check your calendar. There's a celebration dinner happening this Saturday with your name on it. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And so it, it gives like... The workers, the workers should be celebrated while they have a chance to appreciate it. Um, before they retire or sit down and feel like it was all for nothing and you don't see any led, no, no secession plan in place. It's you did the work. And because you told your story, many people are looking to walk in your path. Like many people are like, how do I get to do what you did? How do I um, expand where you left off? So that's what I'm really hoping comes out of this. One, recognition for the workers. Two, um, a succession plan. Individuals that want to follow in their footsteps and actually glean from those individuals while they're here right now um, before they sit down for good. Or just have a mentor that you can call as you're moving through this space and they can say, hey, you want to watch this or you're on the right track, um, put your guards up here, you know, like make sure your money is straight over there. Like just, I'm just excited about the story being told. <laughs> I'm really excited about the story being told from the mouths of the individuals that did the work. Okay. I'm very happy that you're telling me all of this and that you're trying to bring awareness to the situation and that you want everyone to be celebrated for their hard work. Yes. And what they need to be on. So I think that's it. I think we should wrap it up there here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this talk at CPA Talks. I'm Lala and... I'm Tamisha Hill. Tell us where we can so find you. Um, we do have a Facebook page, Unified Community Investors. We are also on Instagram. I am not a big social media buff. So if anybody want to volunteer to provide social media assistance to UCI, we are recruiting <laughs> because that's not my life. Um, it's going to take me a minute to find myself on Instagram. It's on here somewhere. But it's probably UCI. More than likely. Okay. UCI or Unified Community Investors. Mm -hmm. And there will be a connection on Facebook that leads you to Instagram. Great. And no Facebook. I don't really know Instagram just yet. Mm -hmm. And then you can also find our website, which has a link to both social media pages, which is www.unified communityinvestors.org and that's U-N-I-F-I-E-D C-O-M-M U-N-I-T-Y I-N-V-E-S T-O-R-S dot org Okay. Well, I think that's it, everyone. Goodbye. Adios.